People have said in the past, or they come up to after a gig and they say, man, you guys are great tonight. And I'm always very thankful, but I said, you guys are great tonight. We're all there. We're all contributing an energy. You know, as a band, you, you strike a match uh, to the energy in the room and then it, then it becomes sort of cyclical. And it's just like, it's back and forth, it's back and forth. Mm. Ed O'Brien has played guitar in Radiohead for more than three decades, but when lockdown happened, he was about to go on tour with his first ever solo record, Earth. I had the virus at the beginning, right at the beginning. And then once it sort of, once I got over the worst of it, I thought, oh, this is, this is the opportunity. This is the time, what a perfect time to create. And it was, it was really weird because I was exhausted and I, couldn't listen to music for quite a while. I, I remember turning on the radio and I was just, it was just like all this noise and I couldn't, I couldn't bear it. It was really strange. And we were surrounded by bird song, lots of bird song. They were the sounds that I was craving. And I'm lucky because what I've realized over the years is that it's an ebb and flow with music, I think. Yeah. How did you find it? I mean, you finished a record. Oh, I mean, I found it. I think in times of chaos, either I can't face music or I throw myself into it completely. Yeah. And for two weeks, I was just like, that was all I was doing. I was just like pouring over poetry and my old journals and just trying to create, create, create. And then after those two weeks, it just kind of all, it was strange. I had a similar experience to you. It just kind of ebbed. But do you feel like it's been that same experience for you in terms of touring, in terms of like your enjoyment of playing music live? Has it ebbed and flowed or? It ebbs when the, at the end of a really long tour, it's, I think it's well documented in a documentary back in, back in the nineties <laughs> <laughs> called Meeting People Is Easy that we were basically at the end of the whole OK Computer touring. The last six months was really hard because basically we hadn't stopped from 92 through to 98 we'd just been on this album tour album tour thing which we had to do and we want we willingly did it but we we're a bit burnt out by the end and i think those are the exceptions really we all know this that on the whole to be able to play our music in front of people and connect on a musical emotional spiritual level and a physical level is such a profoundly important thing for us to do it feels mm. as human beings and i think this whole if there's a silver lining to this whole time it's you don't realize what you have until it's gone it's like ceremony dance ritual music performance it's all there's a deep-seated we've been doing this for thousands of years in one way or another so of course we, we miss that we we miss that we can miss that connection it's a it's a connection and when it's right it's like for me anyway it's like it's like a divine thing i don't know why but i have a real sense that things will never quite be the same again ed o'brien one of the things that was i was finding challenging was trying to reconcile touring and climate the climate emergency i hope that when we get back into touring because there will certainly be an ease back into it. It won't be like, right, the traps are open, we're all flying out of there. I have to say we have to be better than that now. I definitely feel like that's something that isn't considered enough. I mean, I mean, in terms of like a general, in a, in a general sense, what did you wish you knew about touring and about playing live when you were my age? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's a little bit of trial and error, right? Mm, yeah. <laughs> you have to work out what works for you. I remember like a, a tour in 93 on Pablo Honey, the first tour. And, and uh, I was, you know, we were week four into a really intense American tour. And I phoned my dad and I, was, I said, Dad, I'm feeling really bluesy. I'm feeling really down. And he said, well, how many shows a week are you doing? I said, we're six. He said, how many, how many nights a week are you drinking? And I said, seven. He said, why didn't you just stop drinking for a couple of weeks? 
you know, and, and I phoned him after two weeks. I said, I feel great, Dad. <laughs> so there are the obvious things like that. But I think what we've always been really good as a band, and I, I think we've always had that thing, is you go out and you do your best every night. But at the same time, what I would also say is there are nights sometimes, like in life, you have days where they're not so great. We used to beat ourselves up about it really badly. And if you just do the best you can, that's all you can do. That would be my advice would be to sort of, you know, younger self is just like, as long as you've done your best, that's all that matters. I really like that. That's really positive advice. I feel like that's, that's a kind of lovely place to, to end. Thank you so much. Thank you, Arlo. I feel like I've learned so much. It's so lovely to speak to you. <laughs>